Coming up, some division rivalries and in-state battles highlight week 14. This is Locked On Game to Game NFL. Every game, every team, every angle. Locked On Game to Game, your team every day. Welcome in. You are listening to Locked On Game to Game NFL local experts taking you from game to game, previewing the matchups for week 14 of the NFL season. I am your host, Kainani Stevens. Thank you so much for making Locked On your first listen every single weekday. The Eagles have the best record in football right now, while the Giants have a playoff spot, but they haven't won a game in the division this season. Our Locked On hosts from both teams look ahead on that matchup. The key to a win on Sunday for the Philadelphia Eagles against a playoff contending New York Giants is going to be to make their quarterback throw the football. I'm Louis DiBiase, host of the Locked On Eagles podcast. The Eagles need to make Daniel Jones become a quarterback on Sunday, and the Eagles will win this football game. New York, they're very good. Honestly, they are a lot better than I thought they were going to be in the 2022 season. Currently the sixth seed right now in the NFC playoffs. They are very opportunistic on defense. They have a lot of young talent. They are good late in football games at closing out wins in close matchups. They are very well coached as well. Brian Dable, their head coach, is a coach of the year candidate for a reason. He was great in Buffalo as well as their offensive coordinator. Saquon Barkley's been maybe, if not the comeback player of the year, a top three candidate for that award. The Eagles need to take away Saquon Barkley like they did Derrick Henry last week and Jonathan Taylor a month ago to make sure the Giants are forced to have Daniel Jones throw the football. When Daniel Jones is thrown for over 200 yards this year, they're only 2-2-1. Two, two and one. This offensive attack has been run through Saquon Barkley. The Giants don't have a lot of weapons either. The Eagles need to make Daniel Jones throw the ball. I'm Louis DiBiase, host of the Lockdown Eagles podcast, part of the Lockdown Podcast Network, your team every day. Despite tying the Washington Commanders last week, The New York Giants really didn't lose any ground in the postseason race. But if the odds makers are to be believed, that could change this weekend when the Giants host the red-hot Philadelphia Eagles at MetLife Stadium. Hi, everybody. Patricia Trainer reporting. And for the first time since 2016, the New York Giants are in control of their own destiny when it comes to the playoffs. The problem is that not many people saw this Giants roster as a playoff contender. And they contend that the Giants have, in fact, overachieved in their first season under head coach Brian Dable. Adding to the naysayers argument is that the Giants roster has taken such a hit at key positions, receiver, defensive secondary, linebacker, and offensive line, to name a few, that they just don't have the depth necessary to cross the finish line successfully. But here's the reality of the situation. If the Giants want to make noise in the postseason, It starts with winning their division games, of which the Giants are currently 0-2-1. If they can't beat their own opponents in the division, that usually doesn't bode well for a team if it should make the playoffs. So let's talk about the Eagles for a moment. Can the Giants beat them? On paper, the answer is no. The Eagles have a stacked team that is firing on all cylinders. But games aren't played on paper. They're played on the gridiron which is why any team on any given Sunday has a chance at winning. For the Giants, who are still technically in a rebuild evaluation period as part of this first year of the Joe Shane, Brian Dable era, the expectations need to be kept reasonable. And when they are, the Giants have delivered. Thus far, they've been competitive in just about every loss they've had, save for a couple. If they can be competitive against the Eagles, the creme de la creme in the division, that will, be a, that will go a long way towards the front office's assessment of just how far the Giants have come and how much more they actually have to go. For all things New York Giants, keep it here on the Locked on Giants podcast. Deshaun Watson and the Browns visit their in-state rivals in the Bengals this week. Locked on Browns has more on what Cleveland needs to do to beat the reigning AFC champs. Hey, Browns fans, Jeff Lloyd from the Locked On Browns podcast, getting you all prepped for Cleveland's trip down to Cincinnati, the 5-7 and seven Cleveland Browns facing the 8-4 and four Cincinnati Bengals. One of the popular storylines this week in the NFL is that the Cincinnati Bengals have beat the Kansas City Chiefs three straight times. The Cleveland Browns have beat Joe Burrow four straight times. Sometimes these numbers don't always tell the story. When the Browns and the Bengals have met during Joe Barrow's time, Miles Garrett has been an absolute dominant 
player. His best performances are against the Cincinnati Bengals, and it seems time in, time out, it leaves the Bengals with questions about their pass blocking. Nick Chubb has been a beast in every game he has played against the Cincinnati Bengals. Browns, Bengals, Sunday, it is a big one. It is the season on the line for the Browns. We'll see the way it all plays out. Make sure you are listening to Lockdown Browns on your favorite podcast app, YouTube, and of course now on Roku. Another in-state battle is the Cowboys host the Texans with the two franchises headed in completely opposite directions right now. Dallas is in the race for the playoffs, while Houston is in the running for the first pick in the draft. Our Locked On hosts for both teams give you the keys to a win. If the Dallas Cowboys are going to continue their winning ways and defeat the Houston Texans at home at AT AT&T Stadium this Sunday, they just have to avoid doing anything stupid. Hi, I'm Landon McCool with the Locked On Cowboys podcast, and Let's go all the way back to the year 2002 when the Houston Texans were making their inaugural season uh, a reality. Their first game was against the interstate rival Dallas Cowboys. Cowboys huge favorites over a brand new expansion franchise, Houston Texans, and the Cowboys lose a 19 to 10 game, uh, which was an embarrassing game for for Cowboys fans at the time and still at this time now. Flash forward all the way to now. The Cowboys are well on their way into making it into the playoffs. The Houston Texans are well on their way to the number one overall pick. The Cowboys are the better roster here. They just have to avoid making stupid mistakes, shooting themselves in the foot, and looking past this game to more important games like the Eagles on Christmas Eve uh, and Washington beyond that. The Cowboys have got to find a way to focus and and just take care of business, and, and they should be able to win. If they aren't, if they are more distracted by all the Odell Beckham discussion this week, if they are more distracted by looking forward at their, to their NFC East rivals that they play in two or three weeks, then they could easily overlook a team that – you know, it's been pretty terrible and it hasn't won a bunch of games, uh, but the Cowboys have found that they have been able to play down to teams before. Hopefully this season is not like that and we won't have to deal with that. For more on the Dallas Cowboys, make sure you check out the Dallas the Locked On Cowboys podcast. And for more on any of your teams, check out the podcast on the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. On Sunday, the 1-10-1 Houston Texans will be taking on the 9-3 Dallas Cowboys. And here are three keys to victories in order for the Houston Texans to pull off a very unlikely upset against their I-45 rivals. And for those of you guys who don't know, the Houston Texans have replaced Kyle Allen with Davis Mills, who will be taking a helm as this team starting quarterback on Sunday. And in order for the Houston Texans to pull off an upset, they need to have a better performance from Davis Mills. And in order for Davis Mills to have a better performance, he also needs to take care of the football. The Dallas Cowboys have one of, if not the best secondary in the league. And Davis Mills has had five consecutive games where he has thrown an interception. And in order for Davis Mills to have a better performance, and in order for Davis Mills to actually protect the football, the offensive line has to do a very good job in protecting their quarterback. The Dallas Cowboys have one of, if not the best pass rusher in the game today, with Michael Parson, who is entering Sunday's game with 12 sacks. Coming up, the Chiefs look to bounce back, and Carolina seeks its first road win of the year. This is Locked On Game to Game, NFL. Today's edition of Locked On Game to Game is brought to you by Bet Online, the number one spot for all of your online sports betting needs. You have all the statistics there, the newest lines and odds, and whatever sport you're interested in, boxing, NFL, hockey, football, uh, college football, whatever you are into, you can do that at betonline.net. It's where the game starts. Welcome back to Locked On Game to Game NFL. I'm your host, Kainani Stevens. Thank you for making Locked On your first listen every day. The Titans have a three-game lead in the AFC South, and they hope to make that even bigger this weekend with a matchup against the Jaguars. Locked On Jaguars and Titans go over how each team is going to get a W this week. After a week filled with turmoil, the Titans' key to victory is simple. Get Derrick Henry going. My name's Tyler Rowland, host of the Locked On Titans podcast. Titans fired their general manager during the week and have lost two games in a row. The Titans are desperate for a victory, and I believe it is a must win. And nothing can ensure a victory for the Titans more than a great performance from Derrick Henry. Derrick Henry has had incredible success throughout his career against his hometown 
Jacksonville Jaguars. He needs a repeat performance coming off a month in which Derrick Henry did not go over 100 yards. 53 yards against the Broncos, 87 against the Packers, 38 against the Bengals, and then only 30 against the Eagles. The Titans will need to reverse that trend, get Derrick Henry going for over 100 yards so they can get back on the right track with a win against the Jaguars. For more analysis, check out the Locked on Titans YouTube channel where it's your team every day. I'm Tony Wiggins, the host of the Locked on Jaguars podcast. Will the real Jaguars please stand up? That's what it's going to take for the Jaguars to have a chance to win this game. They have to come out and know what their identity is and who they want to be. They can't be the team that got molly whopped against the Detroit Lions a week ago. They need to be more like the team that beat the Baltimore Ravens two weeks ago. But they need to close that gap with that variance and be more consistent on a weekly basis so they have a chance to unseat the Tennessee Titans. They're three games behind the division lead with two games left against the Titans left for the rest of the season. If they don't win Sunday, their playoff hopes are over. Make sure you catch me on the Locked on Jaguars daily podcast where it's your team every day, Monday through Friday. Mike Tomlin is trying desperately to avoid his first sub-500 season with the Steelers, while the Ravens still don't know if Lamar Jackson is going to play this weekend. I'm Chris Carter of the Locked On Steelers podcast, and these are your keys to their game against the Baltimore Ravens 1 p.m. Sunday at Acrisure Stadium. The Steelers come into this game riding their first win streak of the season of back-to-back -back wins, but they're playing a Ravens team that looks like they most likely won't have Lamar Jackson. So... This comes down to a game where I think it's going to be a war of attrition. The first key of the game is going to be winning the time of possession battle. That means a few things. One, running the football effectively. Two, throwing the, the, the football efficiently. You're not going to ask too much of Kenny Pickett in this game, but you have to do better with possessing the football. They have of late. Two months ago, the Steelers had the second worst uh, time of possession average in the NFL. Now they have the seventh best. Why? They're running the football better, and Kenny Kenny Pickett is throwing the ball more consistently. He's not. He hasn't had an interception since before the Steelers' bye week. Key number two will be to run the football on one of the best run defenses in the NFL. The Steelers' offensive line has drastically improved, and the Steelers have have averaged a a rushing gate a rushing rate over the last five games that would put them in the top 10 of the NFL rushing offenses. But that's behind also Najee Harris, Benny Snell, Jalen Warren, and a group of running backs that have been really physical when they've been approaching the line of scrimmage. Steelers offensive line has also improved with Mason Cole, James Daniels, Kevin Dotson, Dan Moore, and Chakuma Korfor all playing key roles in that as they're playing more together football. But the Ravens are a defensive front that's going to be there to give you a challenge. Clay's Campbell's still there. Travis Jones, the rookie, is looking really strong. Uh, you still got linebackers Roquan Smith and Patrick Queen. It's going to be a very interesting group, and you still have the edge rushers to contain about. But if Najee Harris and the run game get going, they don't have to get for 100 yards in this game uh, You know, for him. But if they can get the running game over 100 yards total combined with all the guys, I think it starts to be the thing that starts to crack things open. And finally, three, win the turnover battle. You want to make sure that you're able to get some turnovers in this game if the backup quarterback is playing. And you want to make it so that that helps get your defense off the field faster. You do that in the fourth quarter. This game is going to come down to whose defense gets tired first. If the Steelers are that defense, it's going to be a long road to hoe. But. If they can make the Ravens the defense that gets tired first, I can see that being a big factor to a Steelers win and extending their win streak to three and getting to six and seven. All those things have to happen first. We'll break more of that down on Locked on Steelers. The Chiefs suffered a tough loss to the Bengals last week, and they will look to rebound against the Denver Broncos. Locked on Chiefs has more on what KC needs to do to get back on track. The Kansas City Chiefs head to Denver to take on the Denver Broncos, and this is your keys to the game. Kansas City is looking at this game, and they just are coming off this loss with the Bengals. The biggest key to this game for Kansas City is staying true to who they are on offense and keeping Patrick Mahomes upright as at QB. Denver's pass rush can be very fierce, so that is something that they have to do to be able to win this game and win it handily like they should. The other key to this game is getting back to who you are on defense. Their defense struggled against Cincinnati at times. Their linebackers need to play better in pass coverage. Their safeties need to play better as well. And that's definitely going to be something to watch in this game. 
And then really the last one is try to stay healthy. Try to get the new players that you have involved in the offense. Uh, Kadarius Tony, it sounds like could be back this week. That could be huge for Kansas City moving forward, not necessarily in this game, but moving forward in the division and moving forward in the season uh, and into the playoffs. So that's what they need to do this week to leave with a win. Going to be a tough road test for Carolina as they head to Seattle. Locked on Panthers keying in on the run game as Carolina wants to get their first win of the season on the road. The Carolina Panthers must continue to run the football well if they're going to win on the road in Seattle. Hi, I'm Julian Council, the host of the Locked On Panthers podcast. The Carolina Panthers are heading out to the Pacific Northwest on Sunday afternoon, looking to do something they have not done all season long. That's win on the road and win back-to-back games, something they can do with a win on Sunday in Seattle. And the best way for the Panthers to do that is by running the football. Interim head coach Steve Wilkes has talked about this team has to lean on its offensive line and lean on the run game, and that has been the key to victory in three of the wins that he's had since he's been the interim head coach here in Carolina. And since he's taken over as the interim, Steve Wilkes' team has rushed for over 136 yards per game and also averaging 196 yards rushing in their wins. And good news, the Seattle Seahawks are among the league's worst teams when it comes to stopping the run. 31st in the league, allowing 155.3 yards rushing per game. So the Carolina Panthers have the advantage. The one concern, though, heading into Sunday afternoon is that Deontay Foreman, who's been the bell cow for the Carolina Panthers over the last month and a half, missed practice on Wednesday with a foot injury sustained in the Panthers' last win a couple weeks ago before the bye against the Denver Broncos. So if Foreman's healthy, the Carolina Panthers should be in great position to win this game on Sunday, even if he doesn't. The Panthers have enough depth on the running back position to potentially be able to run all over Seattle on Sunday afternoon and put themselves in position to take over the NFC South if they can win out the rest of the season. For more on your Carolina Panthers and this weekend's big matchup, be sure to check out Locked on Panthers every Monday through Friday, free and available wherever you get your podcast, part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. The Chargers are really going to need a primetime upset against the Dolphins if they want to keep their playoff hopes alive. Locked on Chargers says they will need a full team effort if they want to pull it off. If the Chargers want to pull off the upset on Sunday night football against the Dolphins, they have to be better in the trenches. This is Daniel Wade here from Locked on Chargers, and I know a lot of the talk is going to be about Justin Herbert and Tua Tonga Vailoa, but Justin Herbert can't do it by himself against a good Dolphins team, and he needs a lot more help from his offensive line, which has really hamstrung the offense. Over the past three weeks, they've been giving up over 20 pressures per game on average, and they're possibly going to get back their all-pro center, Corey Lindsley, which is invaluable this week, and potentially even their starting right tackle, Trey Pipkins. Defensively, the Chargers need more out of their front. We all know they're one of the worst run defenses in the entire NFL, but they're not getting enough from their pass rush either. I mean, they only have three sacks in their past four games, and if they can't find a way to bother Tua Tungavailoa, it's going to be a long day for this defense, which is bad at tackling, and now gets to go up against Tyreek Hill and Jalen Waddle. But if the Chargers want to pull off the upset, it's all hands on deck. It's going to have to be a complete team effort, and this is a huge, huge game for the Chargers if they want any hopes for the playoffs. But for the full game breakdown and other ways that they can win this game, make sure to check out the Locked On Chargers podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. The Patriots are going to head to Arizona for Monday Night Football. They will look to snap a two-game losing skid when they take on the Cards. Locked on Cardinals goes over what needs to happen for Arizona to get the victory.
That's going to do it for this edition of Locked On Game to Game NFL. Thank you so much for making Locked On your first listen every weekday. Make sure you are subscribed to Locked On NFL and, of course, your favorite team's Locked On podcast on YouTube and wherever you get your podcasts from. I'm Kenani Stevens. This has been Locked On Game to Game.